Namaskar and welcome to Sunset Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and you're watching our special show Perspective where we bring you a detailed analysis of all key national and international issues. Today we're going to talk about uh, the issue of a sustained economic recovery by India in the post-pandemic period. In fact, uh, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has recently said that government is not planning to withdraw the pandemic stimulus package anytime soon. In an interview to a Newswire service during a recent visit to USA, the finance minister said that the government has already committed a certain amount of public spending to build infrastructure to provide support to the economy. She also termed rising crude oil prices as a challenge. Now, there are several positive signals on the economic front in the post-pandemic period. According to the NSO data, the real GDP growth for first quarter of 2021-22 is somewhere around 20%. Now, the RBI has also projected the real GDP growth at 9.5% for 2021-22, while PMI manufacturing accelerated to 537 in September 2021. FPI inflows into the country also remain robust, with India reporting highest inflow of $3 billion in September. On the employment front as well, monthly analysis by a specialist staffing firm Zefno showed that September closed at 2,85,000 active white-collar jobs with a marginal 3% growth over August this year and growing 60% from 1,76,000 jobs in September 2020. Now, in this episode, we'll discuss and analyze all this data to understand how India is marching towards the sustained economic recovery in this post-pandemic period and what more needs to be done to give a push to this recovery curve out there. And for more on this, uh, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with Professor Aman Agarwal. is joining us in the studios. He's director of the Indian Institute of Finance. We're also joined by two more guests, uh, Mr. Dilip Chinoy, Secretary General of FICCI, and uh, senior journalist and author Monica Hallan is also joining us. Welcome, all of you, to Sunset TV uh, let me begin uh, with you, Professor Agarwal, and let's start by taking uh, an overview of wh what exactly is happening with the Indian economy and these indicators which we are trying to look at, uh, uh, either in terms of manufacturing, the FPI inflows, uh, the agri-exports, uh, the uh, job or the employment scenario as well. And on top of that, uh, the finance minister making it quite clear that the government's helping hand is firmly here to stay. No, I think the, the remark by uh, Finance Minister Ms. Nirmala Sitaramanji has come as a very good uh, awakening call to a large number of people across the country and overseas as well. It's a very delightful effort where she has said that uh, we will not be withdrawing the support despite the fact that the Indian economy has been growing fairly robustly as against what was expected. And as a result, it is coming to the forecasts which have been made by various agencies including the RBI, the ADB, the World Bank and the IMF, I think we are fairly coming in tune with them where the projections were between 9.5% to 10.5% of GDP growth rate. Fortunately, if you look at the monetary policy reviews which have come out last two times of RBI, even recently one, clearly shows that the inflation is also very fairly under control where it has gone down to 4.35% mm -hmm. for the current point, which is against the expected, which was expected to be a little higher than this by various agencies, including the RBI. So within the band, within the range, uh, if you look at various other factors, which you outlined few of them before, but even apart from that, we look at the foreign direct investment. We have, you know, uh, crossed a chunk of about $80 billion in the last one, one and a half year, mm -hmm. roughly about 73 or 74 billion in last year itself. That was 2020-21, which is about $2.5 billion, $6.5 billion per month, which is a huge chunk of money especially in times when corona and covid has taken over the world Indeed. and the world is striving and financing itself through fiscal spending despite that international agencies companies were looking at india investing in india and bringing in that money and this is highest of the last four five years of investment in india if you look at the foreign institutional investment itself the portfolio as we call it which is a little liquid in nature that also grew by about $35 billion last year, which was the highest of the last seven years. So India, fortunately, has shown that robustness. When we look at some of the international agencies, they have also recognized this fact. And in fact, they recognize the fact that the banking sector, which is always in question for the last three, four years, primarily due to the NPAs which were rising, Indeed. has been uh, you know, benefiting, has been producing well. The risk factors have reduced, and the RBI governor, Shakti Kandas, pointed this fact out also in the monetary policy. 
When you look at the job, you also pointed out the job numbers, they have started growing up. If you mm -hmm. look at the profitability, large number of sectors have been indicating profitability, uh, like the automobile sector, the shipping sector, the healthcare sector, various other sectors have shown a okay. huge amount of profitability, which is in tune with the GST collection, which is there. So overall, I would say there is a positive outlook in all fronts, which is being recognized within the country, in internationally as well. And there is this new way which is there because of the vaccine which the government is providing to large number of people, which is giving them the confidence to move back the engine of growth in this country. And bringing back normalcy uh, to uh, the uh, life. Uh, and obviously uh, that uh, gives a push to the economic uh, growth also. All these uh, set of data seemingly are complementary to each other. Monica, I'd like to bring you in here. And, and when we look at, uh, you know, all these data uh, together, be it... Uh, the PMI manufacturing or the uh, core sectors uh, of the industry, the growth there, the overall real uh, you know, uh, time uh, GDP growth, uh, and uh, the FDI inflows, as Professor Aman was also referring to, they seem to be complementary to each other. Does that mean that we are on the right path when we talk about uh, towards economic recovery, specifically in the post-pandemic period? We've just heard a lot of evidence which is telling us that there is a recovery and uh, for this recovery to sustain, I am delighted that uh, Finance Minister Sitaraman and the RBI Governor are in tandem about not throttling growth mm -hmm. just as we are about to take off. So there have been instances in the past when interest rates were raised just when the economy needed rates to be stable or lower. So it's a very... Um, pragmatic, mature, and sometimes politically difficult decision to keep rates low when there is a lot of, uh, shall we say, uh, vested interests, voices, and uneducated voices wanting lower, uh, higher rates just because they are fearing something called inflation, mm -hmm. completely forgetting that we have an inflation targeting central bank who's committed by law to keep inflation in a band between 2 and 6% with a target of 4. And even if we were to breach that 6, we should probably breach it for a few quarters before we pull the plug on the low rates right now. Okay. So there are, you know, there are really two narratives in the country right now. And the narrative that we are seeing, uh, which data is now telling us, is that the recovery has set in. It is, seems to be fundamentally strong and should the government continue to do this, uh, you know, free up the supply side, keep the money with RBI, keep the money, taps open, spend on infrastructure, mm -hmm. we need to wait this period before private investment can take the baton over from the government. The entire economy has been in distress. It was up to the government to open up the fiscal taps, which very prudently it did not do at the top of the lockdown. There was a lot of international pressure and, again, very strange sort of requests to spend when there was nowhere to spend on. Mm -hmm. But by not doing that and holding the spending back and then starting to spend when the economy could absorb that spending, okay. the government has taken uh, the job creation and all Along the way, there is a little bit of gap between the private sector beginning its investment cycle when the government can hand over at least one baton to the private sector to take this recovery forward. Okay. So we've not seen private investment for many years in India. This gap during COVID has given us the space for even the private sector to rework its costs, rework its business models. And... In tandem, a lot of the cleanup which has happened over the last two to three years mm -hmm. is telling me that this recovery is strong. It's got fundamental uh, roots and it should sustain should the government and the RBI and the private sector all continue to work in tandem. Okay. And just to be very clear, this recovery that we are seeing, is not, it, it has not happened by accident. It hasn't happened as a happenstance or something where India got lucky. This has been part of a plan, and I think it is only fair to accept and to give credit where it's due. Indeed. That this was the plan. Uh, 
everyone took a risk in terms of dealing with uh, back ending government spending rather than front loading it mm -hmm. and that gamble that uh, policy decision seems to be paying off okay and we will have to wait for the next few quarters to see whether or not private investment comes in indeed so indeed yes, we'll, we'll, absolutely we are on track and we should actually celebrate this fact Indeed, we'll, we'll look at, uh, you know, uh, what the future holds and what needs to be done there as well. You made some very interesting points there, Monica. I'd like to bring in uh, Mr. Chinoy as well. Mr. Chinoy, as uh, Monica is pointing out, uh, quite a lot of uh, pragmatic uh, decisions uh, uh, being taken in terms of uh, dealing with the situation, both by the government and the RBI, and seemingly both working in tandem with each other. Given the data set, given the evidence which is there, what's the industry's outlook uh, in terms of... Uh, the overall economic recovery which we're talking about, where do we stand right now? I think uh, what uh, Monica said is, you know, absolutely uh, spot on. I think uh, the government and RBI to really quote, worked in tandem to ensure that uh, the economy, the, the whole economy is in, uh, in such a shape that uh, investments and foreign direct investments are actually uh, welcome and uh, they seek an opportunity in India. But I think, you know, the finance minister's statement about not, uh, you know, uh, pulling the plug on all the, uh, you know, programs that uh, she has announced, I think is very positive. Because if you look at the economy at this point of time, and especially if you look at uh, the small and medium sector and some of the stressed sectors like tourism and, you know, hospitality and sectors of retail and small uh, uh, businesses, uh, they have not yet completed their cycle of restructuring. They have, you know, they are still uh, working with their banks in, in, in you know, in, in looking at uh, the cash flows and, and, and uh, you know, a possible uh, restructuring of their loans. And therefore, to have stopped, let's say, the emergency credit loan guarantee scheme at this point of time and not letting it play out uh, would have actually impacted both the SMEs and also some of the banks because uh, their uh, uh, portfolios would actually have increased NPAs and other issues like that. Mm -hmm. The second uh, thing which is very, very uh, clear from uh, the other uh, incentives or other programs that has been announced, and this actually goes to Monica's point about private sector investment not uh, being there for the last few years. If you look at the 14 odd sectors of the production link incentive scheme, right, that has really the whole, you know, uh, uh, the the possibility, and if you look at the uh, you know mobile sector and the amount of investments that have gone in there, if the, all the other 13 uh, sectors uh, kind of uh, uh, play out the same way, then you'll see significant amounts of private sector investment actually coming in uh, before the deadline of you know March uh, 20, uh, uh, 23. In fact, you know there is one uh, demand, and you know as Monica said, a lot of people are asking the government to do things, but the government is choosing when to do it. In fact, the 15% uh, reduced uh, corporate tax for manufacturing for investments made before 2023. A lot of people have been suggesting that, you know, extend the deadline. But I think the finance minister and the government is, you know, choosing and looking very carefully uh, when and what to do with that deadline uh, and if uh, the step will actually attract okay. more investment or not. So I think you're seeing a lot of parallel efforts uh, there. Uh, of course, uh, the the National Infrastructure Pipeline, the Gati Shakti uh, project unveiled by the Prime Minister uh, last week, uh, all uh, kind of, uh, you know, creating an e ecosystem for uh, promoting economic growth. Even the $400 billion target set by Ministry of Commerce and looking at products and, and, and destinations and, and, you know, working uh, to achieve that. I mean, when it was announced, a lot of people thought that, uh, you know, taking it from 320, 325 to 400 Definitely. billion would be a tall ask. But we seem to be on track in achieving that 400 billion uh, target going front. I think the okay. vaccination is, is, is a big, uh, uh, big positive. Yes, there are some challenges. The chips and the auto sector for non availability of chips is, is a challenge. Um, uh, digital e uh, equipment, uh, getting digital equipment is, is a challenge because of chip shortage and, and the lack of uh, pre ordering. Mm -hmm. And there are some other segments where there are challenges, but I think on the whole, uh, the industry is look, looking forward to revive demand. This is the festival season. Okay. A lot will depend on how the next three to four weeks actually um, play out. Um, and uh, if the demand is as anticipated, then okay. we would actually see more investment 
uh, coming in and more FTI uh, also coming in. Okay. Just to give a heads up, you know, you, you mentioned uh, the interview with the finance minister gave in New York, and you know, I was there in one of the meetings uh, in New York. The sentiment there is hugely positive. Uh -huh. Everyone in the room, whether it was you know the CEOs uh, or of manufacturing companies or service companies or even investors. Everybody was actually looking at investing in India. Okay. And one of the great things was that, you know, all the points that they raised, the finance minister listened to them, and the answer is very simple. If it is a systematic issue, we will fix it. You know, we will come back, we will look at it, we will get all the pros and cons. And if there was a lack of clear understanding, the finance minister asked for more details to understand it and said, you know, send in a paper. So, so the the... The CEOs there actually were quite reassured that it's the government that okay. is listening and the government that is acting. You know, for instance, two years ago, on the same date when they met in New York, uh, people had talked about the pain points. It was retrospective taxation, you know, uh, it was uh, uh, raising insurance limits. It was the six points were raised. And in fact, in this meeting, all the six points had been delivered. So I think the confidence on this, uh, on this government actually implementing um, uh, reform measures and taking it forward, uh, it was very positive. Okay, so so there's a, there's a lot of uh, positive uh, you know atmosphere out there when we're looking at uh, Professor Agarwal. I'd like to uh, bring you in here and. Uh, uh, you know, when we look at all these aspects, uh, as uh, both Monica and Mr. Chinoy were pointing out, uh, clearly uh, the, the, the positive environment uh, or the positive feeling is there and those pragmatic decisions which have been taken when we are trying to look at uh, those aspects, be it, uh, you know, the PLI scheme or ensuring that the lower uh, the interest rates are still kept at a lower level, uh, you know, the RBI and the government working in tandem with each other, it requires a very, very uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, deft thinking and very, very uh, calculated way of moving in, uh, to ensure that uh, this recovery path uh, is sustained. No, you're very correct. I think it's a question of solid foundation and the solid policy framework which is in place with a, a consistently deliverable government. And I think that is not only government but governance as well of mm -hmm. the government. I think it is very clear. I just we would small figures of three, 30 years. 30 years back, India was a doldrum. We had foreign exchange reserves only three weeks of imports. We opened up. Today, we have $640 billion as foreign exchange reserves. Okay. One of the largest foreign exchange reserves, and which is rising by the week. Not by the month now, by the week which is rising. The second factor is, it's a country which is now standing on fairly potential youth being in a position to deliver with a government which is ready to give those facilities, as, as Dilip pointed out. The pointers which are pointed out in the New York meeting has been delivered. And I think that has boosted the international confidence and that will bring in further funds in the following year because this retrospective effect taxation thing has just happened mm -hmm. recently. And that will reboost the confidence in the international participants. Okay. That will boost the job factor. And that is where we are going to see more production, more, more creative structures. And rightly pointed out, Monica, where they said there are restructuring of the private sector which is taking place. It's now taking off. When they're seeing these shoots, offshoots, which the government has been talking about for almost seven, eight months now, okay. coming up, we are going to see those factors come in. And I think this solid foundation with the government which can deliver is something which is being now observed not only by international participants, by the industry, but even the common man. And that is why there is a full confidence in the government in terms of taking forward all the policy frameworks which they're proposing. Okay, so solid foundation of the economy and uh, will to go ahead and take strong reformist decisions as well, quite uh, needed at time. Uh, Monica, you're earlier talking about what needs to be done. And, and if you look at the challenges, one of them has been, uh, uh, you know, already pointed out by the finance minister herself in that interview, that is uh, rising crude oil prices. That is something which is... Uh, uh, going to be uh, on her agenda, on the radar out there. Everybody uh, will be looking at uh, how will government uh, tackle that particular challenge. Your views on that, given the fact that, uh, you know, it's directly in, in, you're related to uh, the inflation and uh, we're not out of the woods yet when we're talking about the recovery uh, curve there. We're not out of the woods yet. We have been in a global catastrophe and the world is still hurting. There, are, there is pressure on commodity prices. The entire global supply chain has broken. And I will give you a small example. So trade depends on ships which have containers. Mm -hmm. During the pandemic, especially containers from China, which go to the US, 
goods and come back with other goods, went all over the world to deliver PPE kits, uh, ventilators, etc. 18% of the global containers are not either in China or the US. Container cost has gone up five times from $2,500 to $25,000. Uh-huh. The Indian cost between Japan and India or China, India has also gone up. The chip shortage is also part of the global supply chain being broken. So uh, commodities being in short supply is also part of that problem. So we must understand that India will suffer just as much as other countries and our suffering will suffer in the next six to eight months because of the global supply chain being in distress. There is only so much that India will be able to do in okay. indigenous uh, steps. But if there is one component which is made only in Japan or China and you need that component for your product, you will have to wait for that container to reach your source. So again, I think we should be pragmatic about what are we expecting the government to do. What it can control, I think it has done very well. There are things beyond anybody's control, which is the global supply chain. Uh-huh. That is going to take time, which is why the support that the government is giving should they are continuing it, and that is what should be done. Okay, okay, uh, Mr. Chinoy, you know uh, all of us know, and the finance minister has already pointed out that uh, the uh, the stimulus will continue. The PLI scheme you mentioned about earlier, the pragmatic decision making also from industry's point of view. If you're looking at a short term uh, and uh, the mid term uh, uh, projection as well. What exactly is it that the industry would want the government to do or continue with, both in terms of uh, policy interventions as well as reformist measures? You know, I think uh, the, the challenge here is to work collectively to uh, see how we can address uh, three uh, major issues, right? Uh, because the rest of it will come in budget uh, in, in this thing. The first one is... How do we identify, you know, uh, where the broken supply chains are going to have a threat to economy? Mm-hmm. You know, many people may not remember, but actually in, in, in uh, February uh, of uh, 2019, uh, 2020, uh, the finance minister took a meeting with 39 sectors to look at how to address the uh, disruption in the service uh, in, in the supply chain because of our dependence on imports from uh, China and finding alternate supply chains. Okay. So I think that work uh, will have to actually uh, continue and looking at not only alternate supply chains, but also, you know, fast tracking and, you know, addressing the investments uh, that were uh, done uh, in uh, India to, you know, for example, very few people know that the pharmaceutical uh, keys, uh, keys uh, starting materials and API uh, the PLI scheme is also hugely successful. It was it has been managed to save you know actually to get over uh, you know hundred million or two hundred million dollars worth of uh, local production uh, to arrest the supply chain uh, disruption. Okay. Again, you'll have to work internationally with the other uh, markets uh, and other things, uh, other countries mm-hmm. to see how we can get critical uh, alternate uh, sources of critical material. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you know, for example, uh, during the uh, during the pandemic, it was getting zeolite from the U.S. or key aspects of vaccination uh, from the U.S. or other uh, countries. Uh, the third, uh, you know, uh, the second thing that we need to really uh, look at uh, here is, you know, addressing this whole uh, logistics uh, supply chain issue. As uh, Monica mentioned, the shortage of containers, the sh- uh, you know, high increase in freight rates, or do we, okay. you know, we've started this whole uh, system of producing local containers, but how can you fast track it? Can you look at, you know, alternate means of ship, shipping, et cetera, the ministry, you know, uh, there is a very high level team, uh, inter-ministerial team, uh, which is actually uh, looking at that. Okay. And the, the third area has to be vaccination. You have to keep focusing on vaccination to build, you know, the whole immunity here. So that, you know, we don't have a, a third wave, or even if the third wave comes in because of the percentage of vaccinated people, uh, you know, the impact is not uh, felt uh, okay. significantly. The other two areas, you know, the coal supply because of the disruption of the petroleum. I think here, uh, you know, as a nation, uh, we need to come together to see how best, uh, okay. you know, we can, um, you know, consume uh, energy Indeed. sustainably, how we can actually yeah, not create a panic uh, situation here, because there's no panic. You have adequate uh, supplies, but we need to think of how do we increase uh, supplies and reduce uh, dependence on uh, okay. 
on uh, imported uh, okay. you know petroleum okay then if you look at the other things the like continuation of uh, you know uh, the reclassification of msmes i think msmes some work um, uh, needs to be done but i think we are, we are waiting for little more normalcy to return here uh, november 8th uh, november is actually uh, mid november when they open up international travel uh, that will actually have another huge uh, boost that that in indeed the, uh, uh, effect on the that 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 indeed is 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 going to be very really important msme sector is uh, crucial to indian economy all of us know that thank you so much uh, mr chinoy and uh, monica as well as professor aman agarwal we're running a little bit short of time but uh, we've looked at all aspects as our experts were pointing out clearly if we are looking at uh, the way the economic recovery is uh, moving ahead uh, the data the evidence there clearly points out uh, and the fundamentals of uh, our economy are quite strong uh, the uh, pragmatic decision making both by the government and by the central bank is also adding value to that recovery path all we need to do is continue on that path and we'll come back again with more detailed analysis when more data set more evidence comes in as to how we are moving around till then keep watching sunset television thank you